I've lived a thousand lives. I've pirated a thousand souls. I've killed and fought and died just for another goal. This is the Happy Jacks RPG Podcast, a roundtable discussion that's a mix of friendship, humor, unbridled enthusiasm, and tabletop RPG topics sent in from around the world. Just for another And welcome to Happy Jack's RPG Podcast, Season 30, Episode 11. My name is Kimmy. I'm Jason. Oh, see, we did it at the same time. We should have freaking figured it out. I was saving out. the best for last. <laughs> the big I'm, reveal. I'm Stu. Yes. So uh, if you didn't get that, I'm Kimmy. There's Jason. And also <laughs> Stu is here. How exciting. Hi, Stu. Hi, everybody. Hi. Uh, see, I told everybody that rumors I haven't missed death. anyone at all. <laughs> Rumors of your death were greatly exaggerated. Like I yes. did not murder you for the podcast. Nope. This is this is evidence. Um, all right. And he's definitely not locked up in Kimmy's basement. <laughs> Although, if you didn't take it when I offered it to you, I probably would have killed you. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, all right, so uh, today we have three emails. One from our Danish listener, uh, Anders, and we uh, I totally forgot to put bullet points, so oops. Um, do you have any imp improv exercises that you like to give people as a toolbox to interact? Is the question from there. We have an email from a brand new listener, um, and uh, they are giving a, uh, they're saying, a, this is this is rough. I'm gonna have to edit success this. Success story. A success story about gaming with their significant other, and we're really accepted. And that's Wonderflonium, um, who I believe is from Oregon. And then Heavy Metal Jess has written in with a great tip that is completely unbiased, and I chose it because it's a great email, and it has nothing to do with any of the products I make. So thank you. <laughs> Uh, all right, and also, uh, if you'd like to contribute a question or a story to the show, you can email us at happyjacksrpg at gmail.com. That's happyjacksrpg at gmail.com. And our uh, call to action this week is JackerCon. JackerCon's coming up uh, July 22nd through the 24th. It's basically 24 hours a day, no matter what time zone you're in, there's probably going to be games there. Um, if you want information on that, go to happyjacks.org slash jc, happyjacks.org slash jc. Um, there's the rules there, the basic information, the link to the Discord. All the games are going to be run in Discord. There's a bunch that are already posted. I still need to post mine, so sorry about that. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's, it's hopping. There's a bunch of people have joined the Discord there to play for JackerCon. It's all going to be online games. It's going to be super great. Uh, if you don't feel like running a game, don't worry, because in true Happy Jack style, I feel like we're going to have more GMs than we have players. <laughs> so sign up to play, sign up to run and play, and or not. And it's completely free and fun and awesome. Yeah. Anyone have input on JackerCon? I feel we're doing the show remotely this week because I'm still testing COVID positive, even though I feel fine. So if things, the, if the if the rhythm seems a little bit off, it's because we're all in different places this week. Ah, uh, ah. Uh? What you were muted? Huh? Oh I was not <laughs> muted. I hate you. <laughs> I'm not. I don't have a mute button. Yeah. No. Uh, all right. I, actually, I might have one. Yeah, you might. I mean, you're on you're on Zoom, so you do have a mute. You just don't have a mute button like in front. I was of looking you. at my preamp. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. So, all right, but yeah, JackerCon is completely kind of like volunteer run. It's fantastic, and we love it. All right, I guess that's all. That went really. I'm used to people. I've never participated in a JackerCon in 12 years of doing this show. I never once could. Participate you should do it this time. I feel time. bad about it. You should. You should feel terrible. <laughs> Well, now that maybe you're more comfortable with using the online tools and, yeah. and you know, that kind of stuff, maybe maybe it's easier to jump in. Maybe. Yeah. I ran. Maybe I'll, I might, maybe I'll play. Yeah. Rather than run something, since you need players anyway. Yeah, usually. I, I'm, I'm not sure I haven't gone mm. a, done a, a count through, but I ran three games last year, and it was really fun. It was pretty small last year because a lot of people were, um, like, it was still, like, the throes of COVID, and it was a little bit right. weird, but... Um, um, there's already more games from uh, posted than from last year, and we're still like a month out. <clears throat> so, Kimmy, um, not for me, obviously, because I know and probably already signed up. 
um, if somebody wanted to sign up and maybe GM a game, mm -hmm. where do they go? So they're going to go to happyjacks.org slash JC. There's all the information about the convention Oh, I thought there. that was the Jesus Christ page. No, okay. Jacker Con, JC oh, for oh. Jacker Con. Oh, okay. Now I feel, so you go, yeah. Uh, but yeah, there. Go, go there. There's a link to the Discord. Join the Discord. And then once you join, there's a really easy bot that like posts everything and people can reserve um, with little emojis. It's super easy to do. Um, and yeah, there's a bunch of people in there. Um, the channels are, or the, the Discord. If you've never used Discord before, it's totally like newbie friendly. Don't worry about like, oh, I don't know how to do it. It's very easy to use. We don't, um, we don't expect people to be like a Discord master to play. Like literally you log in and if you're just playing, like like there are people who are always there volunteering to like walk people through the process. I even put also um, on the happyjacks.org slash JC page, there's like a small tutorial for joining Discord and how to how it works a little bit. So there's a lot of information there. Um, and also explaining kind of like the safety tools that, we all, that we're requiring and things like that for the con, because every game is required to use some safety tools and have that kind of um, as part of the rules. So yeah, happyjacks.org slash JC, do it. So, and again, July 22nd through the 24th, um, we don't have times there because we have time zones, we have people running games in time zones all over the place. Um, and the cool thing, the bot um, that, that posts the games, automatically switches it to your time zone. So if you log into the Discord and you see a game that like, oh, that's at a great time for me. I wonder if it's in my time zone. It is in your time zone. So you can be very excited about that. It's well, the that's future. Cool. Yeah, it's 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 pretty snazzy. Like over the last year or two, like the Discord bots for running games have gotten super slick and are pretty amazing. Cool. Yep. So and thank you again to all our amazing uh, uh, community members who are helping run that because I definitely don't have the bandwidth to run that. So I'm helping, I'm lending attention and support, um, but without the team who are doing that, I, it would not happen. And they're fantastic, I love you, thank you. All right, I'm used to more interruptions in this part, so <clears throat> there you go. Well, I'm, be I'm being my best behavior because it's remote and then you end up talking over everyone. That's true, that's true. All right, uh, well, then let's go ahead and start in the first- I can interrupt video. you if you want me to interrupt you. I mean, I mean, you can. <laughs> We have to get like the true Happy Jacks experience going here, even though we're remote. <laughs> uh, all right. Um, why don't we go ahead and start with that first email? Let's do. I'm going to call okay. in you. <clears throat> Dear Happy Jacks, after being one of your Danish listeners for a long time, I finally have something to ask slash write slash ramble about. Last session was horrible. Not in a horror story kind of way. Oh. Yeah. Um, then at least uh, we would have a good, uh, a good uh, would have gotten a good story. Nope, it was just fucking boring. Oh. I, the GM, had a low energy off day and had a boring section last last way too long, and made wrong choices at every turn. I don't know, I've been there. Um, I, it got me thinking about my players. Like most GMs, I have a fragile ego. Oh, I forget everything I said about being your fault. <laughs> uh, so it's easier to blame the players. <laughs> uh, this would wouldn't have been a, wouldn't have the proper length and girth for a Happy Jack's question without a rambling middle part. Excellent. So you can edit this out uh, if you think it is of no value. Thanks again, Anders from Denmark. Okay, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> mm -hmm. Uh, my take on on the social contract of role playing is maybe a bit different than others. You That's, are not there. Hmm? That, yeah, that, that wasn't the end of the email, dear listeners. That was stupid. I was How making a joke. Yeah, he was that making a joke. Timmy had cut the entire email. Yeah, no, I didn't. <laughs> Stu <laughs> <the> introduction. <laughs> I didn't edit anything. Well, no, you never did. I think I edited twice. Um, uh, you uh, let's see. You are not there to have fun. You and every other person at the table are there to make it fun for the other people. As you entertain your friends, they will in turn entertain you, and you will have fun. It's a give first to receive later mindset. You are you are here to create and enjoy a story, not only to enjoy. The scene, a scene in an improv show, doesn't really work if three people are just standing and looking, and only move when prompted by their fellow creators. While this is, uh, while this is working perfectly in my head, real life application uh, is being annoying. 
my table consists, like most tables, of half entertainers and half not so much. <laughs> this works as I am... You don't want a whole table of entertainers because then it turns into a yuck fest. Mm. Uh, uh, this works when I am on the ball since I can include the more reclusive uh, section, but when I am off like the last session, it's just boring. When the story is boring, the not so much off topic crosstalk starts. Why not? They are bored and ruins the stuff. The entertainers are trying to put on enter, the stuff the entertainers are trying to put on the table. This means the content is even more boring and that feedback loop gets in motion. <clears throat> what I wish is that the not so much react to the boredom by doing something in game engaging and changing it instead of withdrawing and commenting and i know they want to but lack the tools for it what is needed is not how i can include them but tools so they can include themselves i bring more joy to the table and bring more joy to the table and themselves do you have any improv exercises to give people a toolbox to interact something we could do as a pre-session warm-up maybe i absolutely love my group and want to help them get the tools they need to shape the story. All the best, Anders from Denmark. P.S. Drink if Stork talked about the time he lived in Denmark. Stork's not here. He was going to be here, but he's worked too many days in a row, and he was like, I'm very tired. Can I please hey, beg off? Did you guys know Stork lived in Denmark for a while? I didn't. Did what? Really? No way! <laughs> Drink. Woo! <laughs> All right. I, I, I know a great improv game you should play oh no and it does and it does it exactly exactly what you need people to do when they are not good at improving and it's called bunny bunny do you yes! remember bunny bunny oh my god i yeah. totally played bunny bunny with my theater trip. i don't know i know a lot of improv games i don't know bunny 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 is when they taught us at, at the renaissance fair this is long time ago back when i used to take uh, improv workshops there <clears throat> and bunny bunny you have a bunch of people and they're in a circle all kind of facing each other <laughs> and one person puts puts bunny ears up and goes bunny 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 and points at someone and that person has to go bunny 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 and point at someone else and you go around until someone messes up and the only purpose of the game is to look like an idiot no so you get yes it is no let me finish it i swear to you it is and i'm getting it, and it, i okay. have a good okay. point here the biggest hurdle i believe for people improving and acting in character in game is fear of looking stupid. Yes, okay. And if you play Bunny Bunny, you can't ever look stupider than that. <laughs> so if you do that, you desensitize yourself to looking like a moron, and then you can go ahead and play your character, which I guarantee you will not make you look more foolish than playing Bunny Bunny. Yeah. yeah. It's a really great game too because it, it doesn't feel it's not it doesn't feel like an improv game because it's not like people don't feel the pressure to like come up with something, but it really clues you into looking around the group too and like picking up on the body cues of like oh bunny 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 oh they're gonna they're looking that direction they're gonna send it over there like so it really at that same time you you're getting over that uh, it's it's a good like team building exercise honestly I've done that <laughs> with with team building stuff at camps and stuff too. Um, where everyone, yeah, their drop, their their guard drops. Everyone starts feeling comfortable and silly, like Stu was saying. But you also really like get clued in on watching, and and reading the the room basically too. So mm -hmm. and it's just silly and fun. Um, <laughs> what one thing I thought about while you're reading that one, first of all, I have been in this situation. I think all of us have been in this situation, and I really like the expression. Of that we're all here to entertain each other. It's it's too, like everyone has to put something in the pot or yeah. it doesn't work. You can't have, and we've all been at that table with as somebody who's using the game session as therapy and is just taking, Yeah. right? right. And that is, um, that is somebody who is just taking mm -hmm. from everyone at the table and you can do with that what you will. Um, I love the warm up idea. Um, one thing that is possible to tie it into the story of your game is a tradition that I learned in, in PBTA games called Love Letters, um, which is a, a bit of prep for the GM, right? It, this is something you kind of want to do ahead of time because it is some, it's it's a bit of work for the GM. But if you are at a point where you're like, I, I have to pick this back up, it's been flagging and I, I need to um, give something that everyone can react to, 
Um, the the warm up thing, like the easiest thing, is to go around and check on your character relationships again. Like just ask everyone a question, or ask everyone to ask another character a question based on the relationships that they have in the game. Or you could do formal love letters, which are particularly great if there's been a break or there was a real down energy session and you don't know how to pick it back up again. And a love letter requires the the player you're talking to interact with you and to interface with the game with whatever this prompt is you set up in the game. Like it, it could be something like, you know, a uh, dear fighter character, um, your uh, aunt, like, and this would be something from their backstory, right? Like. Your aunt has written a letter that says their their pig has won the prize this year, and they need you to come help with the the pig prize or whatever. I don't know what it, that got away from me. But um, the question of you know, hey, in your downtime, uh, you know, when you go to help out with the pig, you know, what what happens? Who are you looking forward to seeing at the farm, or or do you refuse to go and then find out what happens, and then. Sometimes there is, you know, depending on what game you're playing, maybe you'll get a little bit of like XP or some kind of bonus or some gold or, or whatever it is that you get in that game just for telling a little bit of a downtime story. Yeah. Um, uh, there's which... some really great versions of that too where, and it doesn't have to be uh, something even as detailed as that. It can be, and that's great. Like if it can impact the mechanics, but sometimes it's like simple questions like, um, like who besides you visits your mother's grave, you mm. know, and well, like why, why do they do that? Or how do you know them? Or how did they know your family? So it's something, it can be something like that too, where you don't even necessarily have to prep um, like the mechanical or like, you know, yeah. things and um, you know, or you're on your way home, pick this, this, or this happens. Well, you know, what was it? And so you can get, have it be a multiple choice question too. There's lots of different ways to do love letters and it's kind of evolved as PT, a PBTA has evolved. Um, and, and so, yeah, so I, I that was going to hundred percent be my suggestion. And honestly, there's, um, a bunch of, uh, different prompt things out there too, or I've seen it done with tarot cards as well. Um, yeah, I, I, I like to have a, I have this deck of cards that has a bunch of questions on it, <laughs> just like kind of positive and negative questions. You could just flip the cards around and there's a whole, there's like character questions and place questions and, a ton of stuff. I can't remember the name of it right now, but um, it. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll look it up. I'll post it online later. Oh it's, yeah, uh, yeah. Extremely helpful. Yeah, yeah. Um, Decima, yes. Decima has been. I, I have a lot of people give me the feedback that they use Decima for like shorthand love letters or impromptu things. Um, if they've like missed a bunch of sessions to kind of jump back in and with their characters. Um, but you can also steal the questions from other PBTA games, the character connection questions. Um, if you haven't used them or if you're using a different game, uh, using another game, just grab them from a similar PBTA system. A lot of times that can be used. Um, there's also a lot of session zero games that have uh, different versions of that. And you can go online too. And there's a there's great questions that you can use if you don't want to buy my product because I don't want to seem like I'm just giving info, giving advice to buy my product. Um, and right now it's sold out anyway, so you can't buy it. So, uh, <laughs> but I, I think that's a great way because it, it it's, How much is it going for on eBay? <laughs> I, I don't know. I was selling it for 35 Asking bucks for a pop. friend. Oh, okay. Ask me for a friend. <laughs> no, I would never sell my copy. No. <laughs> Well, not. it depends how much. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> but uh, is it a collector's item yet? <laughs> I could put it up there for like a hundred k and see what happens. Uh, yeah, you, you could totally spend your time and do that. <laughs> that would be, that would be a good use of your time. But, sure. uh, <laughs> but uh, like guided prompts like that are a really great way to get people um, improving and rem reminding of who their character is and get some drama flowing um, without the. The regular imp because a lot of people. I was one of those theater kids who hated improv games. I absolutely hated it, and it was because I felt like I wasn't good at improv, and it was more that I didn't. Uh, I didn't like Stu was saying I didn't like looking silly, so I didn't like that like taking a chance. And then I decided to work at this thing called the Renaissance Fair, and I got over that really really quickly. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah. So I feel like improv games have like a weird emotional connotation for some people who are familiar with them and people who aren't familiar with them are just like, what the heck is this? I don't know. Um, well, I mean, well, there, a lot of people get anxiety about <clears throat> any kind of, any kind of performance like that. Yeah. <clears throat> a lot of people. And it's, 
extremely common and anything you can do to kind of break through that taboo of I don't want to look silly in front of other people. Yeah. Especially your peers, depending on your age too. Mm -hmm. um, anything you can do to break through that is, is worthwhile trying. Yeah, absolutely. I, the one thing that I wonder about is if he is in a place where he's starting to get bored of the game. Cause when I, cause what he describes, I used to do. Yep. And, and it was never in the first three or four or five sessions of the game. Mm -hmm. It was a little ways on when you kind of get to the point, what you know, what I kind of call sort of like the late mid game when the players know what's going on and they're sort of now planning out what they're going to do rather than the GM throwing story hooks and giving them their breadcrumbs or whatever. The players have completely taken the lead at that point. But if that stalls, <clears throat> suddenly the GM is like, oh, I need to start working again. Well, shit, I hadn't been thinking about this. <laughs> and, I, and I wonder if he's just starting to get uh, tired of the game. And there are things that you can do to stop that. too. Yeah. Um, Stork's in the chat, um, and he suggests interludes from Savage Worlds. Um, and mm -hmm. those are great, too. Um, and there's a lot of, um, like, random encounter tables and things like that that you can throw in that you can use kind of as prompts, too. Like, you don't have to, like, actually have them do the encounter. You can be like, okay, while you were traveling, you know, uh, this happened. How do you feel about now that you, you know, you... You were attacked by goblins and you defeated them, but you know, something, you know, make up a thing that happened. How do you feel about that? What, you know, what, how are you reacting to so-and-so doing this thing? Um, so anything you can do to kind of create more, like weave more connections between the party, you know, pull at their backstories, anything like that will really, really, um, I, think, I think that will be more helpful to your game than just practicing like silly improv general games. Um, I think I think Evil Hat is, they, they did a, a crowdfunding. It wasn't on Kickstarter, it was on another crowdsourcing site, but I don't remember, um, called Improv Games for Role Players. And I think, I think that is either kickstarting or out there now. I have not looked at it. Um, it was not something that spoke to me as a person, as someone who's never liked improv games. So I didn't back it, but I know that there are um, like resources out there written for that. And that's one of those things I honestly am like, as a theater person, I should have written that book, but somebody else beat me to it and thought of it and they're smart, so. Yeah. God, I'm trying to remember. Okay, there was a there was another book like what you just mentioned. I can't remember what it was now though. It's been too long. Yeah, it's fallen out of my brain. <clears throat> I just tried to Google it. And it, and it yeah, I feel like there's a couple of them out there that that are yeah, are like so. that. But I, I honestly think like the love letters, like guided prompts about your story or the backstories of players, is like the way to go with this. I, th I feel like that's that's gonna give you more material as the GM to be interested if you are starting to fall out of being interested, like Stu was hinting at. Um, and I, 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 I clocked that every single time that happened in a campaign, Stu. It was like oh, that session. Oh, yeah. And I, like Pooja and I would I like. I a shit poker face when that happens. Too. Yeah, Stu and I'm bored. <laughs> Pooja and I would look at each other and just be like, oh, fuck. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, so I, I feel like that's going to be the thing that keeps you interested. It gives you more stuff to use as a GM because of all the drama that happens with it. It gets them in character and it's not quite as 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 putting them on the spot as a lot of improv games unless you have a group that really loves improv games and then that is wild congratulations where did you find all those weirdos renfair <laughs> no renfair i don't know many renfair people who actually enjoy theater games no i don't I, yeah. the only people i've met who enjoy theater games are people that teach improv classes yeah and, and, yeah. And, and i've never actually like sat them down and said okay do you really enjoy these or do you just see the value of them? Yeah. So, all right. Anything else? Are we good? All right. I Jason. Have nothing else to say. Nothing else to say on this topic. All right. Uh, Jason called the second email. <clears throat> oh, yeah. I, I read through these and immediately texted Kimmy asking if I could dibs <laughs> this one. I'm very um, excited about this. <clears throat> this is great. All right. So. Hi, brand new listener here, Yay! and I wanted to let you know what I was cheering for a brand new listener. Oh, Yay! yes. And I want to let you know how much I love your advice show. This hobby is so much better with a friendly, welcoming and supportive community. Cheers to that. Awesome. I wanted to share my absolutely favorite moment I've ever had in my five years of playing TTRPGs. 
quick backstory. Three years ago, I started a Strahd game with friends, my wife, the love of my life, and the person I want to share everything with couldn't, oh, oh, sorry, let's start that over. My wife, the love of my life, and the person I want to share everything with couldn't play. She is a 911 dispatcher and works graveyard and a lot of overtime, especially when the pandemic hit. When she was able to hang out with us outside of the game, she noticed something she thought was odd. When we would reminisce about our adventures, we spoke about them as if they really happened to us. She wasn't judgmental or, or critical. She just didn't understand. It also made her feel left out. Oh. Yeah, I've, I've been in that I, as an active player hearing my friends talk about the game they were in. I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> it sounds amazing. Forward. I can't believe I wasn't there. Strahd is dead. <sighs> Long live Strahd. Uh, we start a pirate campaign. Arr. Good. Already better. Uh, my wife got promoted, so her schedule is normal and she can play. Oh, also, thank goodness. Yay. She decides on the eloquence bard. I tell her that RPGs are for escaping real life and she didn't need to win every argument in a fantasy world, too. <laughs> Wait, okay, I'm just going to check that Sam didn't write this email. For <laughs> no, okay, it's definitely not written by my husband. Oh, it could be. There's other married men it could be. <laughs> yeah, I I hope uh, <laughs> I hope she's listening to this with you. Um, fast forward again. Game two. The plan, steal a rival, a rival captain's black pearls from his quarters. Oh, my. How? The bard will seduce him, obviously. <laughs> she gets him into his quarters and tells him she wants to play a game. If you win, I take off an article of my clothing and take a shot of some strong rum and vice versa. Her character has a decent dexterity score as well as proficiency in sleight of hand. Her thinking was cheat at dice, get him drunk, get him naked, grab the pearls, run like hell. This is a great to-do list. Are I'm, these I'm, pearls a euphemism for another piece of anatomy? Nope. Nope. Okay. All right. Why does he have to be naked to get the pearls? Well, because then he's so he won't won't chase her. Less he's... likely to give chase. Yeah, is my okay. Uh, All right. And and drunk. And super drunk. Okay. Right. It is not a pearl necklace like you're thinking, Stu. Oh, well, well, I was just wondering if that was a euphemism for testicles, and I'm like, no. right, because he's he'd have to a, be naked. Why are they black? Yes. And I mean, what would have been beating them with? <laughs> <laughs> I, I I'm gonna just impart to you, Stu, that. Uh, Testicles are whatever color the person is, so they can be black. I've, I've never met anyone who's actually like the color black. Well, no, no, no. <laughs> okay. All right. So, well, even with advantage on her rolls, oh, no. she kept losing over <laughs> and over and over again. Oh, no. It's so good. Um, yeah, I mean, in D&D, I can remember the times where I had advantage and rolled like two and three. Uh, but I can also remember having disadvantage and rolling 17, 18. So <laughs> yes. it's, it's fun. It's a fun mechanic. Side note, and this, this is why I wanted to read this so much. I, this is A1++. Side note, I would check in with her after every lost roll to make sure she was still comfortable with the direction of the game. I even texted her to make sure she wasn't feeling pressured to keep the joke going, even if she was feeling uncomfortable. She told me she was fine with it and thought it was hilarious. This is top-notch GMing, yes. mm -hmm. um, whether that's your significant other or not. Um, yeah. That's fucking awesome. Yes. Well done. That was That's amazing. And I love... Especially that you thought, okay, maybe she doesn't want to say it out loud. Right. So, like, texting her or asking her in a, a, at the table, but finding a way to ask her in private. Yeah. So, if she was, like, uncomfortable, but just didn't want to, like, ruin the joke for everybody, like, that she yeah. could have, like, told you that. That is, wah, chef's yeah. kiss. Well done. Surreptitiously checking in and presumably being ready to pull the plug on the scene somehow, if that was the right thing to do. Um, that is A1++. plus plus plus. Um, so she thought it was hilarious. She got a great idea. She convinced the captain that they've been playing the game wrong this whole time. Actually, if you win, you take your clothes off and drink. <laughs> and guess what? She started winning. 
<laughs> because brilliant. of course she did. <laughs> so I love when the dice help us tell the story. Yeah. Uh, yep. I, I like it almost more than succeeding. I, I still like succeeding on a dice roll, but almost as much. I love when the dice help tell the story. Yes. In D&D, &D, so, I like when it succeeds. Her character was in her birthday suit, which is fine because we checked in several times and made sure everyone's having fun. Yes. The captain enthusiastically removes his pantaloons and anticipating some adult time. That's not an unreasonable expectation. Um, she can hardly play at this point because she is laughing so hard. <laughs> she asks, can you describe him again? I say, imagine a short Hagrid with a big belly and tons of hair everywhere. Out of sick curiosity, she asks, what's going on downstairs? I reply, <laughs> it rem... Hold <laughs> on. It reminds you of a button on a fur coat. <laughs> that is that is a fair. Everyone Amazing. lost it. And that includes me right yes, now. Absolutely. Sometime after the fact. <laughs> me. This is this is the scripted component. Me, what do you do? Her. I do what I would do in real life. I pretend to cry. <laughs> <laughs> me. Roll deception check with advantage. Nat 20. Nice. That is where we want those rolls. <laughs> As an eloquence bard, that's a deception of 27. Everyone cheers and laughs. Me. Well, he's absolutely convinced you're crying. Also, since you started crying immediately after he took his pants off, he thinks that the sight of his tallywhack, his tallywhacker was the cause. <laughs> he goes bright red, turns his gaze, and hands you your clothes. He apologizes profusely and covers up. Me, do you grab the pearls? Her, I just can't do it. I've just played this poor guy so hard. It's just so mean. I do grab the rest of his expensive rum, though. <laughs> <laughs> like honestly in his position i think i'd rather have that rum yeah right. <laughs> but a few weeks later we have a party outside around the fire pit i see the D, D group and my wife dying laughing while reliving the moment this was my favorite tprg rpg moment seeing her understand what it's like to share a collective experience with people in a game she now has a sticker on her beer stein that says crying is a free action. <laughs> <laughs> Your new listener, Wonderflonium. P.S. Sorry this was so long. Oh, no. Oh, oh. <laughs> Wonderflonium. You sweet summer child. <laughs> that's that's nice of you to say. That's but a, It's only a page and a half. I know. Yeah. That's barely it's... an intro. <laughs> but they knew to put a P.S. So well done. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, no, cheers for all of that. I don't. Bizarre. I really have no notes. No. But the fact, like, I was reading through this and I was like, hmm, okay, this is an interesting story. And then got to the part where he was double checking, you know, and like texting to make sure she could privately opt out somehow if she needed to. Mm -hmm. I was so thrilled with that. The rest of the story was obviously hilarious. Um, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm like trying to think of all the those great moments in RPGs that I've relived with friends and I think uh, it's, yeah, it's so sweet that his favorite moment in TTRPGs is watching his significant other like discover that magic and that like camaraderie of talking about a game later with friends. Yeah, that's just like, oh, it's so cute. And that actually embodies kind of what our uh, was it the Denmark letter first? Mm -hmm. um, was talking about where where everyone at the table is there to give something. Yeah. Right. You're you're all there to give something, and the fact that they were all prepared to give her that moment, because you know, if you think about it, that's also a moment at the table where everyone else was kind of standing by, letting her take the lead on this scene. They're not rushing in. They're not stepping on her scene or anything. They're they're letting her have this moment. That is something they all gave to her. Yeah. And uh, and then she gave them this priceless moment that they will all remember forever. And I'm going to remember for a long time, yes. probably, except I forget everything, even things I care deeply <laughs> about. Um, 
But um, and the best part of it, it's a great story, but it's a story where she also failed her mission. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which makes That's it better. Yeah. The yes. fact that at the end of it, she's like, oh, I've been such a jerk to this poor guy. I can't, <laughs> I can't go through with it. Yeah. Which I'm sure led to so much more interesting story stuff as they like had to come up with a plan B. Yeah. So, I'm sure they still paladin. wanted to get those pearls. <laughs> yeah. She should be playing a paladin. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, I think I think with improv too, and I think this this harkens back to kind of the first email. A lot of times, um, like people forget the and in yes and. So like when you're you know yes and is a concept from improv that now a lot of people are applying to tabletop gaming, but it's basically it's like when someone presents you with a situation, uh, you agree on the premise, and add something. So you yes to the situation and you add something of your own. So it's if you're like, okay, so someone, generally when you join an improv scene, they set, you know, they, like somebody says what's happening. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. The train's about to leave. Like they give you a line that tells you where they are. The yes is you're saying, oh yeah, I thought I was gonna miss it. So you're yesing, you're, you're saying yes to, you're agreeing that you are trying to get on the train and you are supposed to add something else. So yes, oh my gosh, I thought I was gonna miss it. You know, I, oh my gosh, I think I left my ticket. So you're adding something to the scene to like make it more interesting. If you're like, yep, I made it, let's get on. And then it's like, okay, like that can sometimes be interesting, but that's also like not a adding drama or in something of interest like it can't be oh, a janet a wild janet appears on the screen there's a puppers right. on the screen for you listening at home sorry <clears throat> she very politely asked if she could jump up <laughs> and i can't say no to her yeah um so i think like there's it's great like having i think that's the most important part as we're talking about improving, as we're talking about setting scenes is that you you agree to the premise, but it doesn't necessarily mean you are just agreeing to everything. Like you can bring your and stuff. And that and stuff could be getting to the end of this long scene and deciding, oh, and I'm not gonna take the pearls after what, how, being so mean to this, you know, <laughs> to this poor guy, you know, or it can be, you know, uh, so I think like that first email was saying, you need to like, like you give, but people also give as well, so you need to remember as you're playing or GMing that you're yesing, but you also have to be anding. You need to be adding stuff, and I think that might be partially what was happening in that first email as well. Sorry, I'm like now that I'm like I thought of it after a pause. Um, if people aren't adding things, if everybody's just yesing and agreeing and not adding that and, um, it can get it can get hard and it can get boring. Um, but but that second email was amazing and there was lots of anding happening there and I liked it very much. And sometimes you were like, you're right, Jason, like the dice and a lot sometimes. Like yeah. oh, sometimes it's even better when it's like a failure is almost more anding from the dice than than succeeding sometimes. Yeah, yeah, they great. Sorry, that was my rant on yes anding. I, I'm having like theater kid improv class flashbacks all right oh it's my turn to read huh all right last email mail, mail three hello my friends oh i shouldn't have read this one now this is gonna sound super cheesy oh well do you want me to read it no i'll do it i can read it i, I can read it that way it doesn't sound like self-promotion no it'll it'll sound like self-promotion anyway it'll sound like i <laughs> just no I, can, no I can use like an inflection that will definitely make it not sound like self-promotion. Yeah, no, no, I definitely don't want that to happen. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, my friends. Often people write in asking about for help getting their tables used to a system that isn't D&D. &D. I seem to have stumbled upon a solution for this. The answer for you could be Decima. And I'm not Decima, just saying- Decima, what's that? <laughs> and I'm not just saying this to get Kimmy on Kimmy's good side. Uh, Wait a second. Yes. Wait a second. Yes. Listeners try to get on your good side. Yeah, because I'm nice. Why didn't that happen for the last 12 years? <laughs> Sorry. Because I'm nice and charming. <laughs> yes, and. Uh, I'm, I'm and. <laughs> yeah, you're ending. You are ending very well. Thank you. <laughs> uh, if you run a game in Decima and your friends make up a world that isn't high fantasy, you have a chance of getting them to play in a different system. 
I have been able to do this now and run a game of Kids on Bikes and Blades in the Dark. Uh, by the way, we have a Kids on Brooms game starting this Wednesday, so FYI. Um, if you want to go in the direction of a particular game system, like I did with, did with Blades in the Dark, just see the Decima session with the appropriate info. Let's do a world where we're all in a gang! Worked well for me. After That's not what Heavy Metal Jess sounds like, but that was my like pretending, like that was my seeding a question to the players. That's uh, her voice in my head now. <laughs> it's definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> um... After a Decima session, what I always hear from players about a week later is, I'm still thinking about that game and wish we could play a tabletop, a tabletop session in it. Ugh. Yeah. No, uh, I hear yes. it. Yeah. <laughs> Campaign blue balls. I should put that on the box. Not the R&D for your RPG. <laughs> uh, that's your cue to propose a, your niche system that we've been, you've been dying to run. Really selling it as a good fit for the unique world they came up with during Decima, and they will be on board. This might sound manipulative, and that's because it is. But you could be your best. Uh, but it could be your best bet to run that novel system on your shelf, especially if your players are more like cats and refuse to try anything new. All the best, Heavy Metal Jess. Thank you. Yeah, I agree. That's I really... the it's the eternal fight with every D and D table. There's always one person who wants to play other games. Yes, <laughs> and they get denied constantly. Yeah. But uh, I I think this is great, and I've also I've we've actually talked about this a couple times recently on a couple of the more, of the shows. Like you know, if you come up with a s setting or a system, like which one's better for new GMs? If you're trying to get your party to play a different thing, what's better to sell them on first? Um, but I think I think that's one of the cool the, that's one of the reasons I made Decima, and this is one of the reasons I like like PBTA connection questions and you know a, a bunch of different games that that kind of put some of the creation of the game and the backstories into the, the whole uh, the playgroup's hands is because it gives them that um, that ownership of it and that that interest in it. If, if they come up with it, they're going to just by default think it's cool because it, it's what they made. They like it. So I don't know that that investment and that ownership is goes a long way in convincing people to try a thing. I, I can't disagree with that. It, <laughs> it also, I mean, it, it fills in a lot of gaps too. Um, even like I get some people just want to play D and D that's fine, but you know, D and D doesn't have a, a downtime mechanic, mm -hmm. right? It's not built into it. So if you finish an adventure arc and you've got a little time before the next one, you could play Decima and, and, kind of fill in that story of what's happening in between without having to do a dice roll for every little thing because you kind of have an idea of how you want it to go. You have a little bit more control over it, but it's still randomized by what cards come out. And it it just is a really good way to customize that experience. Again, without all the overhead of doing love letters, if you don't want to put in all that work, because it is a lot of work. Um, Decima is a, a much quicker way. And sometimes it can be that that first taste for free to get your friends to think about something that isn't D and D, yeah, uh, and that has value too in yeah. my mind. <laughs> it's actually a really good kind of like first step for people who are not sure whether they want to play RPGs too. Um, yeah, you know, not not to call out your significant other, Jason, but I'm going to call her out and like she's not really into tabletop RPGs, but she has played a couple sessions of Decima and really enjoyed it. So it's kind of like her kind of first step and then since then she has actually played some tabletop rpgs i forgot about that so it's, it's, i don't know it's like her first little like putting her toe in the pool um for the record i i should amend i know that DD has downtime mechanics i found them deeply unsatisfying and <laughs> insufficient so oh, I, I think they go all the way back to first edition i have an old dmg with, with gygax's name on it and i think there's like tables and shit for that stuff yeah i'm deeply unsatisfied it's really boring <laughs> yeah sit and roll on tables for a half hour <clears throat> oh yeah yeah i mean it can it can work some people love it i know a lot of, i mean a lot of games like like savage worlds the ones we had uh the interlude mechanics and stuff like that so there's lots of options there um but yeah that creating of the world and having them own the world and want to 
find out what happens in it can be can be very powerful and motivational because lots of lots of people are are interested in what they like and self-centered and like hey i made a thing i want to keep doing that thing oh sure yeah absolutely <laughs> yeah chat. I always give them carte blanche to use as much as much paper as they want for their for their backstory too right absolutely mm -hmm. yeah because that's all stuff you can mine later on yeah it's really like it's half the gm's job for you like i have a basic plot thread and look oh i'm gonna tie this enemy from your backstory in and oh your long lost sister is gonna show up amazing and blah 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 all the things that they came up with oh, well yeah. thank you very much heavy metal jess for writing in we always love hearing from you um yeah I think that's it. All right. Uh, thank you for joining us for Season 30, Episode 11. My name is Kimmy. I'm Jason. I'm Stu. <laughs> I was going to hold out. I was going to go second. Yeah. Seamless. <laughs> seamless. I love it. The standoff. <laughs> uh, again, don't forget JackerCon's coming up July 22nd through the 24th. Um, Find more information at happyjacks.org slash JC. All the information's there. Um, evidently, I have to fix the link that the chat is telling me, but um, you, that link works, but the link to the Discord for some reason is not working, so I have to fix that. Um, and yeah, I think that's everything. So thank you, Stu, for coming back as proof of life to show that I did not of actually course. murder you. I'm sleep. still alive. Yes. <laughs> and, and if we ever do a show in the future that's remote, you will be happy to log into your computer from your garage. And, uh, I don't know. We don't have Stu with today's newspaper. I, we can't really prove that this wasn't recorded in the past. That's true. That's true. You don't know if I'm <laughs> even alive. We, we, we can't get burned inside. <laughs> 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 See, the Amazing. invisible mic it actually came in handy. Yeah, that, that was nice. It looks that like was... a hand's coming from you. Very weekend at Bernie's. It was very good. <laughs> All right, um, and today we're going to leave you with a song. We're going to leave you with Jenny of the Old Stones, which is a cover by a band called The Mary Sue's, and you can find them at marysuesband.com. Yes, all right. Thank you all. Bye. I in the halls of the kings who are gone, Jenny would dance with her ghosts. The ones she had lost and the ones she had found and the ones who had loved her the most. The ones who'd been gone for so very long, she couldn't remember their names. They spun her around on the damp old stones, spun away from all sorrow and pain. And she never wanted to leave.